In 2017, my creative partner, Zina Beloya, and I set out on a, an odyssey around the Northern Hemisphere, doing demonstrations and teaching and working together. And we knew we were going to be in the United States for three months. So I contacted my old friend, Mark Lindquist, told him about our visit, and he said, well, maybe you could come down and see us. And we talked around a bit, and he said, why don't you come and we'll work together? And I said, that's a really good idea. Zena agreed. He said, let's do art camp. Anything goes. So we arrived in Florida in May, and Mark's incredible studios were open to us to do what we want, his amazing wood collection. And we decided to make a collaborative piece. And it's interesting how you arrive at the decisions about what you'll do. You have to choose the wood. You have to have an idea of what you want to make. Maybe a theme can begin with an idea. We sat up late talking, we drew sketches, we threw around a lot of ideas for several pieces. And one of those pieces was one that was to be named Paradox and made out of a piece of black ash burl. Absolutely precious black ash burl, it's incredible wood. And again, we talked about what we could do and how we would do it. Nothing finally decided, the process was open as we proceeded. So as a turner, I began turning a simple vessel out of the black ash burl and immediately, as burl does, it let me know I wasn't going to be able to do what I thought I was going to do. Mark made a suggestion and he stepped in modified the rim and we ended up with another kind of vessel and then Mark took the burl to the to his automatic amazing gee whiz systems that he has here and he did his captive chainsaw cutting plunges into the vessel something he's been famous for for so long this was on a very delicate scale and he turned the inside out with those wonderful repetitive lines that he does with his chainsaw cuts. So he had a really thick vessel with a bit of Lindquist inside. So we decided we needed to separate them back to the lathe and I plunge cut between the outside vessel and the inside vessel and we ended up with a bowl within a bowl. And then we transferred to Zina Buloy for her to work her magic on it. Zina Beloy is the most famous carver in Romania when it comes to chip carving, spoon carving. She's considered the great master in her country. For years she's been known primarily as a craftsperson, making work that probably couldn't be repeated by anybody else. Well, not probably, could not be repeated by anybody else. But what is less known about Zina is she's also a sculptor. And she's always wanted to make a foray into the world of sculpture. So here in the United States, she's doing things that she hasn't done before on this trip with Terry Martin and Mark Lindquist. I'm struggling here, you know, because it's a hard wood. And look what I have here. I have to be very careful. It's when I get a, something like this at the end, it's a pain in the ass. So I try to take bit by bit because the wood is very uh, strange, I mean, changing direction and then uh, hardness, everything about it, it's different. So I take bit by bit and at the end I try to give a, a nice angle. Of course I have a little bit of um, not chattering, I don't know how you call this in English. You see the mark of the of the knife because you cannot make a long continuous cut but I don't mind because I think it works with the grain you know it's part of the story 
there's a line it's not perfect it doesn't matter i'm not a machine but here i think this um, it's important for this pattern to show that you can do a good cut and uh, make the rim pop up because the wood it is so uh, unpredictable and the grain so changing one of my secret is to try to make good stopping cuts this is what I call a stopping cut and uh, in this way I don't ruin any edge so it's a challenging wood it's nice to learn all different cuts look you see i cannot force here anymore because if i forced i will end going there so i will change direction of the cut and try to take these bits like this of course if you use an a dremel or a kind of rotary tool grain doesn't matter too much but for the knife you have to work with the wood all the time this is what I I taught myself working with the wood Yeah, there are some um, parts in the pattern which even if they are not perfect they don't disturb the eye but there are important parts which really disturb the eye so we have to make sure that we do those parts right The traditional craft of chip carving that Zen has taken to a whole new level uh, often requires very soft woods because the chips are done quite quickly and freehand. Uh, but with the precision that Zena uses, sharpness is even more important, particularly when she's using a very difficult wood, even a cantankerous wood. And for a chip carver, this wood that she's working on, black ash burl, is really cantankerous. The grain's inconsistent. There are little pockets of hardwood and then pockets of open grain. And the only way she can do it is to approach it one thin slice at a time. So she pairs down each layer step by step, ending with a stop cut at the end of the line, separating that shaving, going back and doing it again. And she's repeating this over and over and over until she reaches the smooth plane that she's looking for. There can't be any faults because when you're doing a repetitive pattern like this, any variation stands out dramatically. So Zena will check sighting along the plane, checking that it's smooth, making sure the points meet with absolute precision, that the center lines are perfect, and it requires such concentration. She can sit for 10, 12 hours at a time and never make a slip. So when Zena is making these cuts, it's so fine that she needs magnifiers on her glasses and she wears five times magnifiers. Her glasses are already magnifying to some extent because she really needs to see this in such fine detail. Without those glasses, I think that precision is not possible. And towards the end, when they're all ready, she will brush them up, burnish them with an, a brush.
think that grain is very important in this piece is the reason I am trying to reveal it. And then she will go through the a painstaking process of oiling and finishing. Multiple coats rubbed off, cleaned back, all the crevices cleaned out, buffed by hand, wait overnight, another coat applied, creating a sheen and a depth, a layer of patina that's going to enhance that grain wonderfully. And in the end, this piece will absolutely sing. There's a captive bowl in the inside with its remarkably fine chainsaw lines. Then there's a smooth line of turning inside and underneath the carving. And then there's Zena's proud carving, much bigger in scale than anything she's done before. It's quite a paradox in, also in that Mark is usually the one who works on the grand scale and he's got the smallest size part, the most secret part, the most hidden part. It's a delicious surprise there in the center of the piece. Oh, that's Mark Lindquist in there, that's incredible. It's a paradoxical piece for sure.